Good morning, church. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1. We're going to be looking at chapter 2 and chapter 1 this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 That's good stuff. As I know it will be said many times today, happy Mother's Day uh, to our mothers. And let me encourage you today, if you're a lady here and uh, you're yet to be a mother or you've come to that place in your life, you said, you know what, it just wasn't God's will for me to birth a child. But you can tell probably by now that it was your job to take care of a bunch of ch children that were birthed, you know. And uh, they come in many different ways, and whether it be through adoption legally or whether it just be one of those agreements that you have, uh, there are a lot of people out there. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that it is a good thing when a man findeth a wife. That means that she was yet to be a wife. Um, and that means that there needed to be praying ahead of time. See, I think what we do many times is we pray about needs as they arise. But we need to pray for needs before they ever get here. Um, would you believe it now that your children probably needed prayer before they were ever born? Ever born? You know, to be able to have that time to pray for them. Um, we probably wish we had invested that now. And so what can happen is some of our moms who says, you know what, we definitely need to be praying for our children before they're ever born, you can nudge those ladies over there that have yet to get there and just tell them, listen, it wouldn't hurt anything in the world to be praying for your spouse, even though he or she is not here yet, uh, or that child uh, that is not here yet. Uh, God will invest those prayers and put them in the right places for the right times. And so we're going to see some of that this morning. We're going to be looking at um, uh, Hannah this morning. Uh, I do want to say this. Uh, I've never been a fan of anybody who stood up before a congregation and said, my throat hurts, so pray for me before I sing. Uh, I've never been one to say, I'm just, my back hurts, and I don't think I can do it today. I've never been a fan of that. Uh, so I'm not going to be one of those. But am I to the place to where I'm nauseated and feel sick, and I think I eat something yesterday that did not agree with me? Yeah. Do I think I got food poison? Yeah. Um, so I'm working through that. So if I'm not as interactive with you and I refrain from hugging your neck, uh, it might be because I don't know what kind of funky I got. Uh, and I know at Lebanon we want to spread Jesus and not germs. Um, so anyway, if I'm a little bit back like that, but anyway, nonetheless, come by and see us after service <laughs> and I'll get somebody else to hand you what I would have normally handed you. All right. But, uh, anyway, thank the Lord for the opportunity to be here today. And we know that when we are weak, he is strong. All right. So uh, let's rely upon that. We're in first Samuel. We're going to go to, we're going to be in chapter one and chapter two. Let's look at chapter 2 to begin with because what we want to do is read uh, Hannah's prayer. And uh, Hannah was a, a wonderful woman as we'll learn more about. But this prayer is one of those famous prayers in the Bible. So if you don't know this prayer, this would be an awesome prayer for you mothers and for you to pass on to your daughters. Uh, it definitely is one of those prayers that fit the female better than it fits the male. But we all can learn something from it. Let's look at verse 1 here. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. That, that was a part of her, their clothing then, their headdress. They had actually taken it and exalted it. Exalted it means to lift it up. Um, my mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Notice where her rejoicing is coming from, church. Uh, this morning, no matter what we're going through, we all can rejoice in the fact 
that there is salvation. Uh, verse 2, there is none holy as the Lord. Do y'all believe that? That's good stuff right there. For there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. She says in verse 3, talk no more so exceedingly proud. Let not arrogancy come of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by his actions, by him actions are weighed, which means he don't forget nothing. Uh, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Verse 4, the bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, for they were Hungry, their hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many is waxed feeble. There is an in-depth meaning here about the Gentiles and about Israel, but for the sake of time, we'll have to look at that at another time. Let's look at verse 6. The Lord killeth, and the Lord maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave, and he bringeth up, meaning that God is the giver of life as well as the judgment of death. Verse 7, it says, And he bringeth the poor and maketh rich, and he bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes, to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. It says, verse 9, that he will keep the feet of his saints. Do you ever feel like you get slippery sometimes? He says he'll keep the feet steady. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. She's starting to stir up a little bit of God's strength right there. His strength, no one can prevail. In verse 10, the adversaries or the enemies of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall thunder, it shall thunder upon them. And out of heaven shall he thunder upon them, and the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. I want to give you three things this morning about Hannah that we all can learn and I think and improve from today and rejoice because here's the objective that when we leave here today we should be able to say listen my cup is full and it surely runneth over because God's blessings in my life and yet I have been reminded yet again of how good a God we serve and what he means to us and what he has done for us and I want to tell you the, the women in this church um, it, it's amazing how over the years that prayer warriors uh, just seem to be more women than they do men. Now, that doesn't mean that a man can't be a prayer warrior, okay? But what I am saying is I believe mamas get so much practice in over their children uh, that you're, it just only makes sense uh, for you to be a candidate uh, to be on your knees and praying because of that bond and connection that you have uh, with your children that us men uh, just will never have. Um, and I'm just telling you, you moms, uh, it is amazing uh, what you mean uh, to the communities, to the churches, to the homes. Um, not that you're the only one, because you need support. Uh, you need to be supported by your husband. You need to be supported uh, your, by your children. And I hope today that your children will turn back and, and say, hey, mama, thank you for all the, the cookies and all for all the little spankings too, amen? Um, uh, I, it took me getting out of my mama's house before I would ever tell my mama thank you for Mr. Pow Pow, you know? <laughs> I, had to, I had to get far out of there uh, before I could, I think it was when I felt like I needed to discipline my kid for the first time that I realized, you know what? My mama might not have been lying to me when she said this is gonna hurt me worse than it hurts you, so. Anyway, it's those things. But, you know, I look back on it now, and I thank God for the correction as much as I do any ice cream or push-up she ever bought me. I, I will tell you, because I needed that more. I just didn't know that then. 
Um, but, but I want to tell you, you, you women um, who are mothers, who are you are mother-like figures, those who will become mothers, um, not just saying this, but you are a special, special kind. Um, and and I, I want you to always be reminded of just how important you are. Um, you know, there's some of you that God's brought to this church whom have never had kids and who will never have kids for yourself. But I promise you, he's put you in a position in this church to be a mother to many. And you couldn't have been a mother to many if you were a mother to one or just a few. And because of that, I want you to always know that you possess those qualities. And just because you may not have one biologically does not mean that you should not have one at all. And so I want everybody to feel included today and know that you are equally important. Um, let's look at the first thing in this prayer that we just read. Um, Hannah feared the Lord. Uh, there was no question. See, what's going on in chapter 1 is they're in a time where there are multiple wives. And um, Hannah's husband, he loved her. But the other wife that was in the home, she was an evil woman. And she was hard on Hannah. She really was. And she talked a lot of trash to her, too. I mean, she really did. She run her down. She ridiculed her. She told her how she was cursed, that, that God had put a curse on her life. Because back then, if you couldn't have children, it was even a bigger deal in society. It meant you had done something wrong and that God had not showed you favor. Because when they use the expression in the Bible that God can open the womb or close the womb, it's the same principle as an open door or a shut door. And, and for somebody not to be able to have it. So can you imagine... This would be the worst part, ready, of two wives in a home back in that day when that occurred uh, and was more accepted in society, and one woman could provide children and this other one could not. Could you imagine that parallel being right there in the same home going from place to place? And so she got it tough. So she was one that she was being uh, pressed down. She was being hurt feelings. She felt like she was less than what she should have been. And so you could imagine her morale and, and what her attitude was. But when you see her prayer and you see what she vows to God, see, it's easy to make a vow to God when everything is going good, church. When everything's going your way, it's easy to say, you know what, I'm going to start doing this because God's doing that. No, listen, she vowed a vow, and I want you to see this vow in verse 11. Look in chapter 1, um, and just so that you can understand a little bit more about her. Um, verse 11, we're in chapter 1. It said, and she vowed a vow. Now, remember now, this is in the midst of adversity. This is in the midst of being talked down to and looked at so bad. She vows a vow. Now, let me tell you, to vow a vow... God says, you vow a vow, that is a big deal. Uh, this is making a covenant with God. And, and, and Paul tells us in, in Romans that it's better not to make a covenant than it is to make a covenant and break a covenant. And, and so they understand the importance, and I want you to get a taste of that importance this morning. For her to say, I vow a vow, would be more than you saying, I cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye. I mean, th this is more than that. I, I want you to see that. So verse 11, she vowed a vow and she said, O Lord of hosts. Listen, I love that. She addressed, she says, my enemies are much, but my Lord has an army. Do you see what she just said? That is so strong. She says, if thou wilt indeed look on the afflictions of thine handmaid, which means she's just speaking in humility. A handmaid was the lowest of low. She says, I'm nothing, God. She said, but I'm calling on everything. And she said here, she said, and will you remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child? What she was saying was, I want a little boy. Now, aren't you glad anymore at the gender revealing party when you bite into a cupcake and it's blue, and they said, you having a man child. No, 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 it's a boy, you know. So I want you to know that when you see man child here, 
It's the same thing as it's a boy. All right. Um, look on, it says, and, and then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Wow. That's awesome. Now, it would have been so easy right here to say, Lord, if you'll bless me with a child, I'll name him after you. Lord, I'll take him here. She says, no, but every day of his life, I'm going to give him back to you. See, this woman here feared the Lord. She feared the Lord so much that she knew, ready, watch this, Mom, that if God was so faithful to bless me with a child, then I better be faithful in blessing my child back to the Lord and never forget who gave that life to me. And so she says, I will give it. And then she goes on to say, she said, I'll give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. This is verse 11 at the latter part. It says, and there shall no razor come upon his head, which means here, she says that he is a Nazarite. And that was one of those customs with a Nazarite that nothing, they would never cut their hair is what that means. And it says, verse 12, and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. All that means is that he sees her mouth moving at the altar. He, he was able to get a, cl a clear line of sight to see her mouth moving as she was talking. Verse 13, now Hannah, she spake into her heart. That means that she wasn't speaking out audibly, but that her lips were moving. So picture this for a moment. You see this lady or this man who prays sometime and you see their mouth moving, but they're speaking within themselves, but their mouth still moving. Have you ever wondered about that, why somebody's mouth may move, but nothing ever comes out? See, what happened here was that she was actually speaking within herself. I, I do that a lot. I, I'm speaking, my lips are moving, but I'm speaking within myself. I'm praying silently. But Eli saw her lips moving. But notice on in verse 13 in this covenant, this vow she's making. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought that she had been drunken or she had been drinking. He, he thinks she's intoxicated. Now, you know what would be a good thing here is that in this prayer, this kind of prayer right here, church, this is the kind that reaches heaven. This is the kind of prayer right here that gets God's attention. Uh, and not, not saying you got to get drunk before you talk to God, but what Eli is saying is, he says she was praying so much in the spirit that it looked as if she was intoxicated. Here's the truth, church. She was intoxicated, but she was intoxicated with the spirit of the Lord. That, that she was so consumed and given to the Lord that it was just consuming her. That, that she, she could not control herself, but she had given herself to the Lord in such a way that Eli, the priest. Now, can you get this for a moment? How many people had the priest ever seen pray? He had seen many people pray, hadn't he? But he said, I ain't never seen nobody pray like that. I ain't never seen nobody look like that when they pray. And so she was giving herself completely to the Lord. And Eli saw it. Verse 15, and Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am, she's addressing Eli the priest. She says, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit, and I have drunk neither wine nor drunk any strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Amen, somebody? Amen. I mean, to know that here she is, yeah, over there taking herself, and she's, she's pouring out her soul. See, this Hannah, this, this prayer, she poured herself out. She says, what I'm about to do is I'm going to empty all of me onto you, Lord. That is so strong. Amen? I mean, listen, sometimes we may not have a whole lot in the tank, but God says, listen, I want to see that register on empty. Amen? He wants to see it poured out unto the Lord. Look at the second thing. She was faithful to the Lord. Not only did she fear the Lord, but Hannah was so faithful to the Lord, even in the midst of all of this. Let's go back here and um, look at verse 6 for a minute. We're in chapter 1 still. Look at verse 6. I, I told you that her, the other wife, 
um, was ridiculing her. There was a lot of, lot of talk, a lot of things going on. Uh, it even says in here that the sons of Eli, uh, they're giving themselves unto the devil. Uh, they have actually given themselves unto Belial, and they're giving themselves uh, into corruption. So there's a lot of things circulating going on. In verse 6, it says, And her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And, and so what it's saying in verse 7, as he, as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore Hannah wept and started to fast. She did not eat. So what I'm saying is she was faithful to the Lord even when the people around her were not faithful. Even when these people were doing what they were doing and calling themselves what they were calling themselves, it says, I'm going to call unto the Lord. And what she says in her prayer here is when she bows that vow, remember what she says. She says, Lord, don't forget me. Now, let's tell the truth sometimes, church. Doesn't it feel like sometimes we don't know where the Lord's at? Sometimes we ask where the Lord is. Sometimes when we pray, we don't think we get a response. Uh, you know, this right here is going on for a long time. See, what we got to do is make sure that those prayers are not a one and done. But see, this woman here kept pouring herself out, kept pouring herself out. She kept emptying herself. You know why you have to empty yourself so much? It's so that God can fill you up. See, you can't get God's fill unless you're empty. And so he said, I want you to empty yourself so I can fill you up. And so... God was working into this, but he says, I need you to be faithful. Let's look at the third thing. She was fulfilled by the Lord. And I think all of this is equally important. But, but let me bring you here. Um, let's go to chapter 2 again, uh, where her prayer is. And I want to read the first few verses of that again. It says, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Uh, my horn is exalted in the Lord. Uh, my mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. See, God had given her a son. God had blessed her. Now, don't ask me how women knew back then, but they knew like early on. They, they didn't have no pregnancy tests. They, they didn't have those kinds of things. They just said, oh, yep, sure enough, um, I'm with child. How in the world they know that? That must have been a day. You know what I'm saying? If y'all ever read the Bible, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like in the Old Testament, they'd be like, yep, mm-hmm. Yeah, there'll be one here in about eight and a half months. How in the world do you know that? You know, because that, that intuition was strong. Maybe God was compensating for a lack of technology back in the day. I, I don't know. But, but it's amazing how they knew. But God would speak to them, and they had that intuition and you mothers still have that even today. You know, you have that intuition, that insight that others don't have. But here's verse 2. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. See, she can say that because she stood on that rock when nobody else was standing with her. When she was the only one that wasn't giving children, she knew that God was the giver. That was her place. That was her refuge. You know, if you've ever had to hang out on a place in your life for refuge, then you'll never forget that place. And on that rock she stood, and she said, in that rock she prays. Verse 3, she says, Talk no more exceedingly proud, that is, those who were talking around her, not in arrogancy coming from your mouth, for the Lord of God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. She said in verse 4 and in 5, The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread. She says, the tables have turned. And she says, and they were hungry, um, and there were hungry ceased, and so that the barren had borne seven, and she had many children waxed feeble. She says, things had changed and shifted in her life. Watch. Number one, because she feared the Lord. Number two, because she was faithful to the Lord. But number three, she was fulfilled by the Lord. Look on, if you will, a little bit further in chapter 2 and look at verse um, uh, 17, verse 18 rather. But Samuel 
Remember, she dedicated her child. Her child, son, the son, the man child, her boy's name was Samuel because she was giving it back to God. And in the reason that we have baby dedications and in the reason we have one today and the reason we have two more in the weeks, we have several in the weeks to follow. You know what they say right here? If you don't want to have no more children, don't drink the water at Lebanon. Amen. I'm telling you, don't ever think you can walk up there and be 60 and say, I can drink it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You drink it if you want to. I'm just saying we cannot be held accountable. All right? Amen. Um, I bet they won't even take a sip now, but they ain't going to. They ain't even going to wash their hands in that water. <laughs> no, wash your hands. God ain't going to just we got wash your hands. All right? Okay. Amen. Um, all right, my mind's wandering. I'm trying to bring it on back right here. A minute. Verse 18, but Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with, with a linen of ephod. Verse 19, for moreover, his mother, which is Hannah, made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year. See, at this point here, he has become a, a teenage boy, and he's serving the Lord. Um, you know, we know we've done something right if we can keep our children in the house of God during the teenage years. Amen. A lot of time, instead of be buying them a coat, we want to buy them something else that fits the waist. Amen. And it's just one of those things that she, she prayed for him. But, but I want to show you something, church. <clears throat> we can't go back and pray before our children was born if they were born. Can't do that. But I'm going to tell you what it can do to your heart. It can always encourage you to know this, that it is never, ever, ever too late with God. Now, you're talking about one we pray to where there is no time. And if we base our hope and our actions upon time frames, and we're talking to one where there is no frame of time, then we don't understand today. See, what's happening is God wants to speak to the heart's of the people and God wants you to know that this prayers these prayers that we put in place prior to anything that ever happens see this woman prayed for a child even though she had been disappointed time after time after time but she prayed for what she knew God could do and not what she felt like she was capable of doing see that was her faith all along, though, she still served God because she feared God. She said, whether he gives me a child or not, I'm going to serve the Lord because I fear the Lord. See, I'm going to give myself to him if he never gives me anything else because I don't stipulate my worship. I don't stipulate my relationship. I don't stipulate my faith based on what God gives me. I base it on what God has already done for me. And I base it on what he said he's going to do for us. And so we, we remain in the fear and admonition of the Lord. We, we stay faithful to the Lord even when it seems like God, like heaven has closed up and nobody's answering. I'm telling you, it'll feel that way sometime, but we just need to know that God always answers prayers. That, that even though you've been pay, praying for your child and, and praying for some things to change, because I'm going to tell you what will set in this congregation today, easy. It'll be for mamas who said, I never had this walk with the Lord back in the day. I, I, if I would have had this walk with the Lord years ago before I had my children, if I would have had this walk with the Lord before I ever even thought about having children, things would have been different. Listen to this. You can't go back there and regret and shame ain't going to fix nothing. You can't hang your head in this congregation. You can't walk out of here feeling like woulda, coulda, shoulda. Mm -mm, no, ma'am, that is not the answer today. God is telling you today that it's going to be all right, that he is a God who can do all things, and if we will not hang our heads today in regret and shame, but bow our heads in prayer and stay fearful and faithful to the Lord, he's going to fulfill everything your heart desires. 
And so we got to know that today. Amen. God is saying today, he's not going to give you a message of defeat today. There's no message in here that ends in defeat unless we just choose to go that way. Yeah, are there defeats yet? Yeah, absolutely. That's because we stop looking at the solution. And if we look today and understand that it ain't too late for your teenage youngin, it ain't too late for your man child, literally, all right, who's already having children and babies on themselves, and you think, oh, my Jesus, amen? But I'm telling you today, if you will continue to give that child, because that's still your baby, I don't care how old or young they are. Listen, I, you give that child to the Lord continually, and you continue to pour yourself out before the Lord as Hannah did, even to the point to where you empty yourself for God's feeling, I'll make a vow today that God will meet the need because he is a God who says, when you give me whatever you give me, if you give it to me, I don't care how shattered it is, how broken it is, how past due it is. Let me tell you what, God can pay any past due bill. I'm telling you, that's why they give a 10-day grace period, y'all. I'm telling you right now, God can meet the need, but you got to give it to him. And if you walk out of here today like Satan wants you to, saying, man, boy, I wish I would have heard that 10 years ago. Or, boy, I wish I'd heard that 30 years ago. Or, I wish I was where I was now. Let me tell you something. It's never too late. As long as there's breath in your body, a Jesus on the throne, the grace that is around us abounding, God can touch anybody, anywhere, anytime. And let me tell you, it's when there has been four days late, that's when he's right on time. And he wants the odds to be stacked against him so that he can give glory to the Father and good to every one of us. And so just remember today in the house of the Lord, don't walk around here like that. God said, I didn't mean for my message to do my people like that. He said, I just want you to know today that, listen, we need to learn from our mistakes so that we can grow from them, so that we can lean over there and do some Titus 2 and let our older age women who's been there, done that, got the T-shirt, can go over there and lean over there and, and hug these little young girls who's yet to get there. And if you could turn back time, just know this here, which ones would you talk to? Well, then turn the clock back today to where God's telling you, well, if you would have started then, then maybe this wouldn't have happened. And you go over and you grab them children and say, look, let me tell you something. You got to form a relationship with them first, which means you need to kind of hang up around them, you know, a little bit. Don't just catch them in the hall today saying, let me tell you what you better do. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, you're going to scare them to death and they're going to go out there and do it twice as worse as you ever did. Amen. But, but you got to form a relationship. You got to get around them. You got to love on them some. And don't just, just notice, you don't just come to church just to get what you need. But you need to come to church so you get what you need and you can help give to these other ones what they need because this is the body of Christ. It's connected together, joined together, fitted nice and neat. And God said it takes all of us striving and working together to get it done, y'all. So God is saying today, use it for his glory. Let's take all our mistakes. You know, if we took all our mistakes in here today and we learned from them and we put it toward the greater good. Man, I'm telling you what. They'll have a tough time keeping anybody down there in the Effingham Hilton down there at the road. There. Amen. <laughs> They'll have a tough time down there, you know. We, and this is the kind of change that God wants. But don't just leave the house today, God's house, and just say, man, it's a good day. And, you know, boy, I can't wait to get there and eat what we're going to eat and do what we do. But God wants you to know today that you're eating right now. You're eating on manna. You're eating from God's word, church. And, and this kind of stuff right here is what changes lives. But it takes you wanting it and emptying yourself so that he can fill you with all that he is. He, he fulfilled the Lord. I, I think what's really nice here is when you see what, can you imagine how this proud mama felt when she was making a coat year by year and she carried it over there and, and she was putting it on her son. That, that had to be, that makes mamas proud, don't it? You know what every mama wants today? Every mama wants all her children to go to heaven and be with her one day. Mm -hmm. Yes, she does. And, you know, I, what I love sometimes is some of these mamas that's prayed for some of y'all. And some of them mamas has gone on to be with the Lord. And, uh, but do you know her prayers are still working on you? 
See, anything given to God's eternal. He said, boy, I wish I had mama's prayers. Well, let me just tell you something. Anything your mama gave to God, anything in heaven is eternal and it never dies. Them prayers was put in heaven. You don't think them prayers ain't still at work? Just because mama gone don't mean her prayers is gone. See, and a lot of them prayers that mama did then is still working in your life today. You say, well, man, that's pretty awesome. Let me tell you what's even more awesome than that, that you know that today and say, all right, that means to my prayers today that I put up in heaven will be eternal. And you keep praying and displaying. If there's one thing I've learned and one thing you know, we can't alter what anybody else does. We can influence them, but we can't make them do it. What do they say? You can't make them drink water. You can lead them to the trough. You can't, you can't make them drink, but you can put salt in their diet and make them real thirsty. Amen? Amen? So what I'm saying is we can influence them, but the only thing you can control in this whole matter is you. But if you're so concerned and so consumed about trying to fix every little thing, you're going to stay broken. And you being broken ain't going to never bring no healing to nobody else. All we can do is control ourselves. So stay the course. Stay the course. No matter what, stay the course. Because that's what God wants. It might not always be what you want, but that's what God wants. She was so fulfilled she got to see that happen before her very eyes. Um, and, and then one thing that happened here, notice what happened to this girl. Look, look at, verse, um, look at verse, uh, 20, verse 19. She made him a coat, made a sacrifice. Verse 20, um, which is in chapter 2, it says, And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord, for they went unto their own home. And it says in verse 21, and the Lord visited Hannah. That's pretty cool right there. Ain't it? Ain't it pretty cool for you to post something today on um, something, whatever you call them, and, and say, the Lord visited me today. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Amen? I kind of like it. It, it. it said that so that she conceived and bare three sons, two daughters, and the child Samuel grew before the Lord. See, he blessed her with five more children. Now, you might want to say, Lord, I don't want my prayer life to be that good. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want it to be that good, but I'll take some of that. But here's what you need to know is that God blessed this woman who didn't have no children, and she, she did what she was supposed to. And I, and I guess let's close like this. Is that God gave it to her. But I'm going to tell you, there wasn't a day went by that she didn't give that child back to the Lord in prayer. And, and what happened was God took Samuel and used him. Now, he did a lot of great things, but one of the most greatest things that I know Samuel ever did was that he listened to his mama. He listened to his mama. Because somebody had to teach Samuel how to pray. Who better to teach him than the very reason he was there? See, if Hannah hadn't prayed the way Hannah prayed, Samuel never shows up. You see that, don't you? So when she was growing him up, if she's giving him back to the Lord every day, then he's seen his mama's mouth move a lot. Amen? And then she said, somebody's got to teach this boy how to serve the Lord. She showed him how to do that. And it got to the point one day that he was so anointed by God that God had anointed this, this prophet Samuel. He says, I need you to go anoint the king of Israel. He says, now he ain't ready yet. He's over at Jesse's house. And he says, even when you walk in the door, 
he's not going to be there and he's not going to be the one you think it should be. He says, but his name is David and that's the one that is after my own heart. And it was this same Hannah's son, Samuel, that took the horn of oil and poured it all over Jesse's son, which was the eighth child. And he says, anoint him, because one day he'll be my king. And so it is. All of these things work together for good. And I want to leave you with this. You'll never know how small this world is until you see how big your God is. But you may not know it now, but the one you're working with at work, by your influence on her or him, when they give birth to that child or help raise that grandchild, that grandchild may very well be the one that comes along one day and speaks to your child or your grandchild and leads them to Christ. See, whatever it is we start in God will be finished in God. So just know this, you may not see it come complete circle here, but you start something with God here, he'll finish it. And you may never see it or know it till you get to the kingdom. But the truth of the matter is, though we'd like to see it here, we're just glad that we'll all be in the kingdom together because of what God started. But we must be fearful, we must be faithful, so that God can be fulfilling. Will you stand with me today? Would you bow your heads with me? Let's pray a prayer just before we sing because it is prayer that has brought about this message today. I don't know if you're in a position to vow a vow. I don't know if that's where your heart is today. But I do want you to consider it and then let it be led of God and not of me. Secondly, I sense today that there is a lot of celebration and rejoicing among us because this is an enormous day. But there may be a lot of children today that are not serving the Lord and they're not in the house of God. And so it is today we want to pray for them. Now, I want to start with our ladies, but they need to be supported by the husbands as well. There may be some of us in here that are contemplating getting married, having some children one day, and you realize now how important it is to start praying for that now. You say, man, I ain't having no children right now. I'm telling you, if you spent the next 10 years praying for that child, it wouldn't be too much. But at the same time, there are also a lot of young children that have been born into this church. And you know, it wouldn't be too early either to start praying for their life, for their purpose, to dedicate them back unto the Lord today and make that a daily standard, not a routine, but a daily standard. And for us to know today that it is not too late to put them at the feet of the Lord. But nor is it too early to be praying for their spouses one day. You and I both know that who they marry has a lot to do with who they become. That can make you or break you. But then we need to start praying for their children one day. You say, preach, that's 30 years down the road. What's 30 years? It's gone by in the blink of an eye. Start praying for our children's children. That not only they'll be healthy and good people, but they'll be godly people. And that they'll serve the Lord. And that they'll know their purpose at an early age. 
and maybe not have to wait like some of us and wait to the end of our life to find out why we started to begin with. But if we pray a prayer now and we vow a vow, I promise you this, what we start, God will finish. And it'll only come because of the people who are reserved in fear of God, that is respect, and also for the faithfulness that we will maintain and keep. Even when our kids are out there doing drugs, even when our kids are out there doing things they shouldn't be doing, we stay faithful to the Lord. When they get down the wrong path, when they give in to peer pressure, when they make bad decisions, when they do things we wouldn't have done, we can never turn our backs. We can never not, we cannot disown them. But you have to remember that God gave you that child. And he gave you that child. And it's a reminder today that it is never too late. But let's be fearful, faithful, and let's let God fill us up today. Amen, somebody? All right. This morning, as God speaks to our hearts, maybe we need to come and, and, and put some of these things on the altar. We need to come and pray. Uh, truth is, I've given you so many different things you can pray for. Don't worry about what your neighbor thinks. They ain't going to know. What in the world are you coming to pray for? Amen. But let's lift them up to the Lord today in prayer.